It's through the dreaming eyes of childhood that most of us are captured by a passion for angling. But from even our earliest, most primitive days, man has attempted to catch fish, motivated originally by hunger. You like this bread, don't you? <laughs> Chris Yates' son, Alexander, is already inspired by the hunting instinct. And perhaps it's the primitive in all of us that allows us to recognise the mystery and enchantment of fish-filled waters, even the village pond. No. <laughs> but having a fishing father yes. gives a child the chance to explore oh, yes. more deeply this magical world, a world of dreams, of fabulous monsters, of drama, suspense, and sudden job. joy at that first unexpected Chris big fish. There. He's just gone through here. We might see him again another day. Oh, look at that! Oh, the biggie! A carp! You got one, yeah! <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> look at that. Hold it gently. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And a child inspired by angling soon learns to care for its treasured prize and the world in which it lives. Oh, if I'd have caught a carp like that when I was your age, I'd have thought that was a... Oh. All my dreams come true. And for Bob and Chris, a passion for angling is not just about how to catch. It's about how to enjoy. Retracing their childhood roots, Bob and Chris have returned to fish Frensham Little Pond for tench. But one of the joys of angling is catching the unexpected. Bob has caught one of Britain's most beautiful fish, the rudd. And it was when catching lovely creatures like this as children, not as big as this, of course, that they were taught the fundamental rule of coarse angling, that fish unless the highly edible sort should not be killed. So they soon learn to touch and admire without causing harm, and take their reward from seeing them swim back into the mysterious depths, as perfect as their dream. And this is going to be a sight to amaze you, slowly. There, oh. what do you think about that? Oh, wow. About 30 times as long as your minnow. <gasps> Several hundred times as heavy, oh. but they're all they're all beautiful, big barbs. Look at that one coming in. It's nearly ten pounds. Would you like to have a crack at one of these barbs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like to try and catch one. Let's see what we can do here. You take the rod. I'll bait up for you. <laughs> Two grains of sweet corn. Right. Away you go. Just make everything nice and slow and. Deliver it and don't make any sudden moves. And they won't mind us. That's it, that's it. That's it, good. Right in front of them. Now we wait. Ooh, look at those. Yeah, there we go. Big fish. Look at that. Can you see that big one over there? That's big. No, coming in. Yeah. He's going straight for your bait. He's got it. What? Don't strike, no, don't strike, wait. Wait, steady. Yeah! yeah. You got one! <laughs> Good. Well done. Go! Oh, you got one! Yeah. That's it. Whoa! Deep in the heart of the rolling English countryside, 
lies an ancient, overgrown little pool. Not much larger than a farm pond, and not unusually beautiful. But we have monsters living here. Giant carp, engaged in enthusiastic courtship. These carp were stocked here in 1934 and have grown to such huge proportions that this little pond, called Redmire Pool, has become a mecca for carp anglers worldwide, with fishing stories to outmonster Loch Ness. In fact, so many legendary carp have been seen and caught in this pretty little pool that it has become quite historic. Chris Yates is a bit of a legend himself, for in 1980 he was lucky enough to catch a record carp of 51 and a half pounds, right here. For those who aren't yet sure whether anglers need certifying, the next carp fishing technique Bob and Chris try might just confirm it. They're all down there now. You see the advantage of getting above them. Oh, it's lovely. Right, now I shall show, show me this trick. This old Amazonian Indian trick. He's going to get my bait with <coughs> that fish. Right down there. <coughs> Can you play another tune? Uh, hey, you, you point the fish you want. They're all in range. They're in the bait arm. Hold it like this one muddy in the middle way. Right, I'll get it just beyond and you can twitch it back. Okay, cool. Go. <laughs> I like it. Look at that. Can you see your bait? No, not in amongst all that mud. They're very eager. That's the, look, that's the fish. He's right over my bait. I can see the line. He's just twitching the line. He's going, he's going, he's going. You got him. I believe it. No, I've got it. I've hooked it now. What the hell am I going to do with it? We go in. In? We can't land it from up here. We've got to go in and land it from down there. Take the line off me again. Ah! Yeah, we're in still. Come on, get the net. <laughs> my hat. <laughs> hey. It's deeper than I thought. You said it had only just come over my wellies.